Well, hi, everyone. I'm Andy Asher, and I am uh, the editor of Bloomer Boomer. Now, my parents uh, would always tell me uh, the wisdom about, you know, pinching pennies. They often reminded uh, me when they would give a gift, they would give me a, a piggy bank. And uh, then I would dutifully fill it up for the, the next rainy day when my uh, little savings account was running low or I, I uh, felt like uh, splurging, uh, maybe on candy bars. Uh, but anyway, that quaint notion is a far cry today with the creative marketing strategies of credit card companies. Now, uh, credit cards were just another way to make a purchase. Now the companies make it really attractive with a kickback on my purchases. Uh, they don't call it a kickback. They, they're rewards. It is a flourishing and popular benefit if you are a savvy buyer who pays off your credit card balance each month. Now, uh, uh, credit card companies are competing to get you a, as a customer with some pretty amazing incentives. Today, we will uh, talk to Kiplinger's contributing editor, Lisa Gerstner, who wrote the Best Rewards Credit Cards 2017. We'll, uh, we'll talk with her in just a moment, but I uh, just want to let you know this is part of the uh, Plus 50 Good Life movement. Now, this is a, a project of uh, a Bloomer Boomer, and uh, so we do a lot of different things. And uh, it's, it's a publication where we uh, bring stories and we uh, bring ideas from authors and thought leaders and inspirational people. It's uh, a movement for new and evolving things that make for a plus 50 good life. Now, the shows are about what's working and what's not and how to make the best of it. And in the end, hopefully something that you can take away for yourself. Now, our guests are uh, thought leaders or experts. They're people with life experiences to emulate. Folks with a unique expertise are those that give us one of those aha moments or a revelation that can suddenly transform the complex and the bewildering into the understandable. Well, among those is our guest today, Kiplinger's contributing editor, Lisa Gerstner, who uh, wrote the Best Rewards Credit Cards 2017. We'll be back with Lisa in just a second. So, uh, Lisa, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. You know, it's uh, an eye-opener that uh, times have changed so much that uh, credit card companies will really bend over backwards to, uh, to get our business. And uh, in a way, if you're a smart consumer and you, uh, you pay back your, your bills at the end of the month, uh, this is a pretty good deal, it sounds like. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, if you're responsible, you pay your bills, you can make some pretty good cash back or points or miles, you know, whatever you prefer to do in that regard. The, the issuers have really been competing heavily for business. Um, you know, I saw a study that said since 2010, the largest issuers are spending twice as much on rewards as they were at that time. So they're really investing in it. Well, they um, are seeing, uh, obviously, this, they're seeing the rewards themselves, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, and I, I think they are trying to kind of get some loyalty. You know, they they think if they can draw you in with these big bonuses that they're offering, you know, sign up bonuses of fifty thousand points, maybe you'll stick around and be a repeat customer, and and you know that's that's part of what they're aiming at here. Yeah, that that's right. Now, something that I noticed you uh, brought out in the article is that. Uh, there are really credit cards for kind of specific categories. Now, maybe that's obvious. I'm not a huge credit card user, but it's interesting that uh, you can have credit cards for travel and, and, and food uh, that sort of seem to specialize in a, a kind of a niche. Uh, that's, that's unique as well to me. Yeah, it's great that there are so many different ways you can do it. If you want something really basic and not have to think about categories, just get a basic cashback card that gives you the same rate on everything. You spend a bunch of money on groceries every month, you can get a card that pays back uh, up to 6% on groceries, which is a great rate. Um, there are gas-specific cards, uh, lots of credit cards, and that is huge. So 
you really kind of look at your spending patterns, you know, figure out what am I spending the most on and go from there. Now, there are some companies uh, are bigger into it than others. Uh, I, I, I know that uh, you broke it down with uh, Chase on the, on the top, right? Yeah, so according to that study I saw, Chase is spending the most on rewards in American Express, which, which had previously been kind of the big vendor. So, um, yeah, some of them are, are really aggressively um, marketing their cards and, and trying to get more customers. So uh, then from the standpoint of uh, the different cards out there, I guess, to, well, I mean, if you're getting a rewards card, you want the biggest reward. <laughs> so uh, it, it's, it's uh, worth the time to uh, find out which, cor which card gives you the best uh, return or reward, I guess is more accurate. Yeah, and that was kind of a goal with our article is to look at all these different categories and, and figure out, you know, which cards are really kind of yielding the best overall deal for you. Um, with cashback, it's pretty straightforward. Now, if you're looking at points or miles, it, it's a little more tricky because you have to look at what the value of those miles actually are. Um, you know, you, you want to look at, for, for points, about a rate of about a penny per point is, is the baseline you should be looking for. Sometimes you can do a lot better than that, just depending on the program. You know, especially once you get into travel cards, like with airlines or when you can transfer your points to hotels, you know, that gets a little tricky. You just have to kind of gauge, you know, what, what's the best deal for you. If, if you stay at Hilton a lot, maybe that's going to be, be a great credit card for you. And the, uh, the other thing, too, is that uh, the credit card companies are going to also give you uh, something, a little spiff or a bonus uh, just simply for signing up. So there's a little bit there as well. Yeah, so some of them are offering you know really big bounties um, uh, just to, to get you in the door. Like I said, sometimes fifty thousand points, which could be worth you know five hundred dollars or even more, depending on what the point value is. Um, so, so some some really attractive deals out there. But of course, you have to look at the long run too. You know, maybe it's it's a great initial deal, but um, you know, a year later, are you still going to be wanting to use this card? Is the annual fee going to be worth it? So you have to to calculate ahead a little bit and decide whether the overall deal is going to be good for you. Now, in your article, you broke down um, and you came up with a sum that uh, someone who used their card during the year uh, might benefit. Uh, do you recall the, the dollars on that at all? Um, are you talking about the rebates? Like yeah, yes, uh huh. Yeah, so we looked at the consumer expenditure survey from the Bureau of Labor Statistics for that. Um, and so what we did is, is this survey kind of shows, okay, here's what the average person spends on food at home or food away from home, which would kind of equivalent or be the equivalent of groceries or restaurants, um, gas, all these different categories. So we calculated, okay, for the, for the average person, here's what you're going to get back on this card based on that data. So we came up with kind of a typical annual rebate and, and that's how we help to judge these cards. Uh, something uh, you and I were talking uh, about just a, a few moments ago before we started is that uh, baby boomers uh, have the most cards, so uh, I guess there's no surprise to that, but uh, they, they must be a market that, uh, that the credit card companies like, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, at, at that point in your life, you probably have, you know, a, a good income, some some money that you can spend on these cards, and you know, of course, you still want to be responsible with it. But that that's certainly going to be attractive to these card issuers. Yeah, and you probably gave uh, that's the best advice you just gave. But uh, you know, as we close out, uh, any kind of a, a takeaway for someone who uh, might want to get into this? Yeah, well, again, I think that you just need to look at your spending patterns and also just think about kind of your personality. You know, do you prefer things to be really simple? Um, you know, just get a, a basic cash back card. Basically, um, you really like to see a double cash card for that because you get 2% back on everything. Um, maybe you really kind of like gaming it and trying to get as, as many points or cash back as you can in all these different categories. And in that case, you can uh, try out different cards. You know, you just have to be careful. You don't want to open a whole lot of cards at once. That can be a, a ding on your credit score um, if you try to apply for several cards. So kind of take it slow and steady and, and decide what's going to work best for you. Well, beautiful. I, uh, that's uh, really interesting, and uh, it certainly got me thinking because I am going to be doing a little bit of traveling, so I might as well get a card that uh, gives me a little bit of a benefit as well. <laughs> yeah, a lot of options. <laughs> yeah, well, Lisa, thanks so much. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been really interesting, so uh, uh, thanks for taking the time. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Well, 
I hope you liked the show and I, I hope you learned a thing or two. The full show will be available on YouTube and at Bloomer Boomer. And the uh, audio version will be available on Apple Podcasts over at iTunes. If you uh, want, you can check out our other shows. And there'll be others coming up with some really amazing guests. And it'd be great if you would like us on Facebook and visit us at Bloomer Boomer. See you later. Bye-bye.